Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you why I love to use TypeScript in my React projects. In order to do that, I will divide this video into three different sections. The first one, I will show you a JavaScript example in order for both of us see the pain points we may have when consuming components in JavaScript. On the second part of the video, I will show you that exact same person component converted into TypeScript and how much easier it is to consume that component. Then, on the third part, I will show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to move that person component from JavaScript into TypeScript. So, without any further ado, let's jump into our first example. Over here, we have a new React project using JavaScript. I already went ahead and created this person.js component. And this person.js has three properties, a name, a birth date and a birth location, and then we are using them over here. In order to show you some of the problems, I will start by importing this person component in my app component, and now we can just see that we already have the import over there, which is quite nice and is independent of the fact that we use JavaScript or TypeScript, but now the differences start when we do control space. Over here, in normal JavaScript, we can see that we have the name, the birth location, and at the top, we also have the birth date. But you can already see that the types for it, it will be any. So in reality, it can be a string, a number, it can even be an object with first name and last name. So we are forced now to go inside the source code of our person to understand where we use the name. You can see that the only place we use the name is over here, so it's safely to assume that it will be a string. I will do name equals to Bruno. Now, the next property we want will be the birth date. And the birth date, we have the exact same problem. We don't know if this will be a string or if this will be a date object. We are forced again to go inside the source code. And we will see that we have a birth date dot to iso string. That's a method from the date object. So we already know we have to pass a date. Let's come over here, do control space again, enter equals to new date 2020-0101. Now, the last one is probably the hardest of them all, which will be the birth location. And the birth location, once again, has an any property. So we need to go inside the person, click on the bird location and see where we are using the bird location. And we need, inside that object, a latitude, a longitude and a height. And this is the Z index of the coordinates. So let's come over here, do control space again, enter equals to an object with longitude 20 west, for example, latitude, latitude 30 north, and then the height we can say 300 meters is a good height. Let's just say that we want to see the result of this and we can see that everything is being populated over there. But what if we make a mistake in the longitude and we just do longitude, for example? You can see that now we are not showing it anywhere. We don't have any error in our console because, well, we are not using TypeScript. Even worse than that is if I want to go to this name, let me just close this. I want to go to this name and say, it's no longer called name, it's just N. Well, in this case, I will have to change it manually everywhere. I will need to go to this name, put an N, and now, if you see this, it will not be working because we don't have a name, so I need to come here manually, put an N equals to name, and you can see already that only with using person one time, it's already a lot of changes that we need to do because we don't have TypeScript. So I will now move into a TypeScript project where you will see that these changes will be much easier to accomplish. Over here, we have the same exact project as before, but this time using TypeScript. You can see already by the file extensions, which is app.tsx. TSX means TypeScript with JSX inside. So now if we focus into the code again on line eight, we see that for person, we are still not passing any props. That's why we have that red line below it. If we over, you will see a really helpful error message. It says, the type empty object is missing the following properties from type person props, name, birth date, and birth location, which are the mandatory fields or the mandatory properties for this component. We can do the same thing we did before, control space. We go to name first, 
and we can already see that the name has a type of string. So I don't need to go inside the person component at all to start to use it. I can now do bird date and it says that soft type date. Once again, I just need to enter, say new date and say 2020 0101, for example, right? Now, the last property is the most impressive of them all. We have the bird location and then inside of it, we have the latitude, the longitude, and we have the height. And we can see that the height has a question mark, which means that that property is completely optional. You don't need to pass it. I will show you in a second. Let's do this. Let's create the object first. And now we can do control space. We have help to type latitude for us. We can just say that in the latitude, we have 22 degrees west, for example. In the longitude, we have 33 degrees uh, east, for example, or north. I don't understand anything about coordinates, right? So <laughs> now the last one is the height. And you can even see that on the height, we have a really nice comment. If I do it again, it says, how many meters above ground the person was born? And it's optional. So I don't have any error over here. I can say height, 555 meters. If I pass a property that doesn't exist, for example, Bruno 1, we will have an error. I can over over here and it will say the type latitude, longitude, height and Bruno is not assignable to the type latitude, longitude and height. Object literal may only specify known properties and Bruno does not exist in the type that we are expecting. So the error messages are quite good. On top of that, as you already saw, I can make a mistake and I have an error. So I can over over here and if you scroll just a bit, you can see a super nice message. Did you mean to write longitude? And actually, that's what we really wanted to say. I can now open this over here and you will see that everything is working as before in our JavaScript version. The only difference is that this time we didn't need to open our person component one single time. Just imagine that if you have 300 components in your application and 10 developers, how much time it saves you. Now, I will just do a small refactor on person for you to see that if I rename person over there, and I can even copy this two or three times, you will see that this rename on name will do the rename everywhere in my application. So let me open person and let's say that from now on, I don't want it to be called name. I want it to be called just N, for example. I can right click, click on rename symbol and say just N. I do enter. If I go back to my app component, you can see that it updated everywhere where we are using person. So it updated in the first instance, the second instance and the third instance. On top of that, if I have somewhere where I, I'm using, for example, material UI or any other external dependency, if they change, when I update, I will have an error because now if I have name, it will tell me that name is not known from this specific component, which is amazing. So now we will flip once again and I will show you how you can create these and what this code in reality means, because that's the only difference between our TypeScript code and our JavaScript code. So let's start a new project and just copy it from our JavaScript project. And I will show you step by step how to achieve that. In order to start our step by step guide, I will create a React TypeScript project over here. Now I will go to our old person.js file, copy this one, create another person.tsx file and just paste that one over there. I will do the same with the app.js. So I will come over here. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, the application is already working. So for now, let's forget about the browser, close it. I will expand this application and we can start to focus on our person.tsx, which has some warnings over here. And all of the warnings are the same. I will just read one of them and explain what's happening. We have binding element name implicit as an any type. This is happening because of our tsconfig.json. We are passing a strict property over here. I will leave a link in the description of this video 
to all the properties that you can pass to TypeScript compiler. So you understand all of those properties. It's a huge, gigantic list, okay? But by default, having strict to true is a good starting point. So now we go back to person and how do we define that contract between whoever creates this component and whoever is going to use this component? You can think of it like the same contract you have with your employer. Your employer tells you in the contract that you have to work, let's say, eight hours a day. And it also says that your employer at the end of the month has to pay you X amount of dollars. This will be roughly the same thing. And for that, we will use an interface. Interfaces for us will act as a contract. So how to define interfaces in TypeScript? We will say interface, we will use the same name of the component plus props. So person props, that will be the name of our interface. Now, it will be our contract. So what we want name to be? Well, we want name to be a string. Let's just define name as a string. So the way that we define types in TypeScript is by using this column. We are saying that name will be of type string. Then we finish it with a semicolon. We can do the same for the birth date. Let me just copy birth date. It's easier to do it this way. And we say that the type of the birth date will be a date. That's the way it does. Now, bird location is one that you can do in two different ways. So first, I will do an inline object over here, and I will say the first one is the longitude, which is a string. Then we will have the latitude, which is another string, and we have the height, which will be a number. We already saw that we wanted the height to be optional. So if you want something to be optional, you can put the question mark. This is the same thing as if you do or undefined, okay? This pipe over here means this type or that type. In JavaScript and TypeScript, in this case, if we have undefined, it means that that field is optional. So let's say that name for some reason could be a string or could be an object with first name of string and last name of string. So now people can pass a string or they can pass an object with first name and last name. If you want, you can have that. This pipe is literally a or. Okay, I will just remove this for now because we don't want that for now. We just want the name to be a string. And now in order for saying that all these properties are of the type person props, you are probably already thinking that we will do the column and then the type. And you are absolutely right. So now TypeScript already knows that the name is a string, the birth date is a date, and the birth location is this object over there. If you think that you will use this location in more than one place, so if you want to use it in more places, you can do the following. You can remove this inline declaration from there and say interface location, for example, and oops, I have too many curly braces now. And if I format, you can see that we have the same location. And over here, we just need to say, okay, the birth location is of type location. Nothing else changed. We can see that it's a location. And so when you look into location, you have that. Even if you use it that way, you have all the benefits as before. I can delete this one. If I do control space, it still autocompletes for me as latitude. So it's just a way of you defining it. It doesn't have any difference for the people that is consuming you. The only difference is if someone wants to now import this interface from uh, outside of this file, they now can just use the bit of location. It's up to you if you need that or not, okay? Now, another thing that you may want to do is, let's say that this height, when you are over here, it's not clear enough what's happening. So when we come here, if we do height, you can see that we have no comments over there. And you saw that when I showed you the, the TypeScript version, I was saying something over there that it was the height the person was born or something like that. Well, you can come over here and do a JS talk comment and say something over here, say something over here, okay? We can do the same for the name, for example other thing over here, okay? When we save and we go back over there, we can do control space 
and now the height as say something over here. So people that are consuming your components or using your components, they can read whatever comment you put over there. So it's one less reason for them to be forced to understand your source code, which is really great, great, especially if you are creating a library that will be consumed by thousands of people. That's really, really good. Even if not, I have usually the practice on every single property that is not immediately obvious to put a comment explaining how to use it. For example, imagine that the birth date instead of being a date was a string. Usually you can put a comment here saying, please use the format YIYDDMM, for example. And so people that are using it, they already know which format you are expecting, okay? And these type of comments are also really, really useful as you saw. We have our application working as we expect. We can also, as I showed you before, now come over here and say that name shouldn't be any longer name and it's now hello. I save that, I come over here and it already changed all the instances that we are using. So TypeScript knows exactly where this person component is being used. It can track that it's being used there. So it just, just changes without we worry too much. Now, you may be wondering, okay, Bruno, but what happens to those interfaces? Are we sending that code back to the browser of our client? Because if we are, now we are sending a lot more code. Well, let me relax you a bit. Let's come over here to TypeScript lang language. And in the TypeScript language, we have something called the TypeScript playground. So if you are not sure what's happening, you can always paste our component over here. You can see that the resulting has no types at all, no interfaces, nothing. You can understand that TypeScript is only available to us at development time. As soon as we compile TypeScript, all the types go away. So this is the exact same result as you see here, no typing whatsoever, as if you have done all the code in normal JavaScript. So we get all the benefits out of it without sending anything bigger to our clients. And you don't have to type too much, which is great. With just a few lines, a few interfaces, you can already enhance quite a lot the development experience of your colleagues. So I really hope that this video showed you a bit why some people love TypeScript, why I especially love TypeScript. And in the next videos, we will start to look into all the React hooks like the use effect, use state, etc. And all of those we will look using TypeScript as well. For the rest of the series, we will use TypeScript for everything. So I hope if you like this video, please drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, and I see you in a few days. Bye-bye.